Hi friends, Cubital Varus or Gunstock Deformity is a prerequisite for everybody in the world to know. You will get a child usually of uh, 5 to 8 years. They will be an informant. They will be mentioning about the right or the left side of elbow. With uh, the deformity being present for these many months or years. And the major concern is a cosmetic concern. The child is playful, there is no limitation. He has a history of trauma, dates back to many years. Initial treatment being a cast or some surgical intervention. The deformity is insidious onset and gradually progressive. There is usually no history of uh, fever, weight loss. Do ask for the history of massage or manipulation. Describe the build of a child. Describe that you have examined in all the positions. In inspection, you can see there appears to be a cubital varus of the particular limb with or without hyperextension. Is any prominence of the lateral condyle or the lateral side of the elbow seen or not? Do mention about it. Is, can you see any swelling in the cubital fossa? Do you mention about it? Any scars, sinus, dilated veins, skin condition should be commented on. Do comment upon the wasting of the arm and the forearm fragment. On palpation, do about the temperature, the tenderness. Tell about I am confirming the findings of inspection, thickening of the lateral condylar ridge, the medial condylar ridge, the supracondylar ridge and what is the three point relationship that you can see and you can palpate. Talk about the individual component, the distance between the condyles on both the sides, the, the between the tip of medial epicondyle and the olecranon and the tip of lateral epicondyle olecranon and uh, is there any palpable mass in anywhere in the, in the cubital fossa or any uh, distal vessel deficit or do you have uh, any palpable uh, lymph nodes or not and also remember one secret in cubitus varus the because of internal rotation element there and the varus there the medial epicondyle is usually higher than the opposite side when you compare do talk about the range of movement flexion and extension and they usually have some restriction of flexion and some extra extension that they have because of an extra articular component being there. Do talk about pronation and supination and do compare how it is. Change the arc of movement. Some, some patient will have hyperextension as told to you. The range you should mention from 20 degrees of flexion to uh, 20 degrees to 110 whatever range of movement is there. Some patient do have pronation increment or decrease and some patient do have the change in supination. Talk about the laxity and do talk about the interrogation deformity and do talk about the amount of shoulder rotations that you have, the Yamamoto test. We will just talk about it. Do talk about the carrying angle. Do talk about the arm length, which is from the lateral to lateral uh, part of the acromion till the middle of the joint point line joining the both the epicondyles and then from the center of this point till the center of the two stylar process is the, is the forearm length. Do talk about it. Do talk about the girth measurements bilaterally and talk about the other joints and the limbs normally. So you will have a 10 year old female or with complaint or deformity of one elbow for two duration. There is no history of pain. There is no limitation of activities of daily living. There is a history of fall and they was treated by a bone center with bandage and massage. One month after the treatment parents started noticing the deformity of the right elbow which is not progressive. So it is usually not progressive. There is no history of any other joint involvement or any difficulty in using the hands for activity she is attending fifth class. There is no ligamentous laxity, no deformities of any other joint, she is moderately built and nourished. On inspection there is inward deviation of the forearm at the elbow, hyper extension of the elbow joint, there is no scar or sinuses, there is no muscle wasting, there is no abnormal prominence seen on the lateral aspect of elbow and medial and condyle appears just there is an abnormal prominence on the lateral aspect of elbow, but the medial condyle or the medial side of the elbow appears less prominent. Olecranon is normal and the attachment of tricep appears to be medial. Paleocrine fossae appears normal. On palpation, there is no local rise of temperature. There is no joint line tenderness. There is thickening from the both medial and lateral supracondylar ridges. The medial and lateral condyles, radial head olecranon is felt normally. The three point relationship is maintained. Ulnar nerve is felt in the cubital tunnel and does not subluxate on the flexion. 
on taking segmental measurements the arm and forearm segments are comparable with the left side intercoronal distance is comparable on both the side there is hyper extension of 20 degrees with limitation of flexion up to 120 degrees carrying angle is 10 degrees of varus supination and pronation are within the normal limits there is no varus or valgus instability on examining the right shoulder there is limitation of external rotation of 10 degrees and the similar type of intervention is exaggerated compared to the left side wrist is normal ulna median and radial nerves are within normal limit diagnosis is cubitus varus deformity of the right elbow most probably due to malnarrow supraglenoid fracture of humerus which is non progressive what is cubitus varus you can only comment it on cubitus varus if you have extension to neutral if it is not possible you can't have it cubitus varus because the three point relationship and the carrying angle reduces or decreases or changes when there is a flexion of the elbow a deformity of the elbow resulting in decreased carrying angle so that with the arm extended the side and the palm facing forward that is supination is deviation of the forearm towards the midline cubitus is the latin word of elbow and varus means the angled inwards what are the components of a elbow joint an elbow joint is made out of humero ulna joint which is a major joint it's a simple hinge joint and allows the movement of flexion extension then you have humero radial ulna joint which is also a hinge joint you have proximal radio ulna joint what is the carrying angle it is the angle formed by the long axis of arm and the long axis of forearm will the elbow extended and the forearm supinated it is because the lower end of trochlea the medial end of humerus is longer as compared to lateral column causing a mild valgus angle the carrying angle is ranging from 5 to 10 degrees in females in males and in females it's higher 10 to 15 degrees if carrying angle is exaggerated is cubitus valgus and reduced carrying angle is called as varus and zero carrying angle is called as cubitus rectus